This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, the association with MGM Marbella. We're in the headquarters of Frank Warren here. How are you, Frank? I'm hanging in there. What about you? Yeah, hanging in there is the word. Um, saw your ALS ice bucket challenge. Didn't yeah. batter an eyelid, did you? I'm used to getting the cold, cold baths every day. Yeah? Yeah, good for you. It keeps you, keeps you young, it keeps you, keeps you going. I thought all the promoters should have done it, but I've only really yeah, seen only, a couple. It's only, you know, the old school ones, the only one they're capable of. Yeah. No, they don't. Maybe Kelly will do when, when she comes out. Well, we'd better get a waterproof wig. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, August is traditionally um, sort of a mid season break, but it hasn't really been. There's been stuff going on. You had a show at the start of the month. Um, yeah, I, I think it's because of the World Cup, yeah. you know, because there was that hiatus in between whilst the tournament was on, so therefore, you know, nobody was showing any boxing. Obviously, you're contractually bound to put a few fights on, so, you know, that's what we've done to keep all their contracts current with the fighters. Um, last time we spoke to you would have been on the 1st of August in, in Wolverhampton. Uh, disappointing night for yourself and Frankie Gavin, his first defeat as a professional. What's happened since then? Have you had any talks? About how to move Frankie on from this? Well, he's you know he's obviously very disappointed, but you know it wasn't a ter it wasn't like he got a terrible good eyelid. I mean, I thought he won the fight, but you know it, it, it is what it is. You can't change the result. Um, you know, I'm, I believe in Frankie Gavin. The board of control have actually put out a fight against him and Bradley Skeet, which would take place, which is a good fight. Um, but I believe in Frank, and I'm sure he'll come again. Um, you know, it wasn't like Amir Khan when getting knocked out in one round and then coming back and winning a world title. You know, he got he got actually in a very, very close fight against a quality operator. I mean, you know, Bundu's a, a, a quality operator. Mm. Um, Frank, since the fight, there's been some tweets from Leonard Bundu, uh, which I believe have come from his Twitter account, if it's him or not, uh, in reference to payment and things like that. Have you got any response to this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we complied fully with, with the agreement we reached with his manager. I didn't deal with Bundu, I dealt with his manager, and the manager has received, his, received the funds as per our agreement. You know, the coincidence of this was Bundu apparently was out in the fight, out in the States for Kell Brooks fight. He was, I saw him there. Yeah, yeah. and the guy who's, who's, who, who apparently um, was talking to him, Sports Mile, I don't know who he is, I can't think of the guy's name. Who's the guy from Sports Mile? Correct me if I'm wrong, allegedly he used to work for the darts, or he'd done a lot of work for the darts as well. So you put little bits together and that, and sometimes people get up to a mischief and try to create this crap. You know, Bundu's been paid. If he hadn't been paid, I'm quite sure the boxing board of control and the EBU and Uncle Tom Cobby and all would be screaming the house down. And it's just, it's just annoying. He, would, everything as per his agreement, his contract was dealt with and done as per the agreement with his manager. Well, I'm very through with it. By the way, we paid him money to vacate the Commonwealth title as well. So, so much for you know uh, all this crap. Okay. Fair enough. Um, has there been any talks about a rematch with Frankie? We did, but you know it's difficult because they're looking on. Which you know that that, that fight was, we, as we all know, was uh, for the number one spot to get the shot for the world title, and uh, Bundu is obviously looking to fight for the world title, and, and obviously the defence will have to be made against him in due course. From my point of view, um, you know I'd like to get the fight on again. Um, Frankie and I are meeting, and Tom Chaney were meeting on Monday, so we'll sit down Monday and look at all the various um, various uh, scenarios and make a decision and an announcement as to what his next fight will be. Frankie and Leonard were rated quite highly within the IBF, so if Frankie had won that fight, he would have sort of put himself into a shot well, of that IBF fight. Yeah, it, that's yeah. what it was. The winner of that, it was agreed, would get a shot at the title, so that's what it was all about. That's why we paid, that's why we paid for the opportunity to get the fight at home. Home advantage, but you know, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. It was all about that knockdown. I repeat myself again. You know, the body shot. That was the difference of winning and losing the fight, according to two of the judges. Okay. Um, Gary Hyde uh, put a tweet out the other day uh, saying that he'd met with yourself uh, and your boys, Francis and George, in Portugal regarding Rigondo. It's been all over Twitter, rumours surfacing that. You're about to do something with Rogondo. Can you make any comment on this? And well, this we, is true? We're, we're, we're hopefully we you know we're not we you we know, we're very close to doing something. Rogondo's a, a great fighter. There's no doubt about that. Bob Aram done, you know, whatever way, whatever the views are and whatever. Bob done a great job with him, and you know that contract expired. Uh, 
He's a free agent, and uh, I'm very interested in doing something. I, mean, I, was, I was listening, to the, was watching the uh, uh, thing he done with Eddie Hearn the other day when he was talking about, um, you know, Rigondo, who cares, and fan base. It's not about who cares; it's about bit fighters. He's, he's probably in the top three best fighters in the world. There's no doubt about that. He's a quality fighter. He won the world title in his sixth or seventh fight. I think it was very, very quickly. He won it. Um, you know, wasn't expected on paper to beat Donair. Done a great job there. And why wouldn't he be? Why wouldn't he be, be big in the UK? There's two great fights out there. There's Frampton and Crowley. They're, they're, they're massive fights. Uh, sorry, quick. They're massive quick. fights. They're massive fights. Both massive fights. Why wouldn't those fights be great for the British public against the you know the guy? And one thing's for sure, they certainly know he is in America, and they know he's in China. He got massive viewing figures, and we're in, we are in the age of TV. You know, for him to appear on, say, for example, on one of our cards with one of our other sh other you know, marquee names, and him on that sh same show will only attract TV from around the world. So it's being a bit disingenuous to to uh, ring into. And as for saying that, you know, we haven't got. Uh, was it we haven't got big name fight? We haven't got any big name fighters. Well, I mean, the two two of the top heavyweights in Europe are with us and fighting on yeah. the uh, uh, in November without a doubt. You know, I would say the light, best light heavyweight in the country arguably is Enzo Magranelli. You go down the middleweights, you've got Billy Joe Saunders and Chris Eubanks, and we'll talk about that during the course of our little chat today. Two of the best out there without a doubt. You've got Liam Smith, who's who I think is miles above Brian Rose. I don't know what your opinion is on that. Liam Williams, a great talent coming through. We've got Frankie Gavin, Bradley Skeet, who we spoke about. Um, Terry Flanagan, Derry Matthews, two good fighters. Liam Walsh, Mitchell Smith, Paul Butler. Um, you know, fastest fighter, fastest English fighter. The fastest that an English fighter has ever won a world title. All those guys there, they're all coming through. They're all about what, we're, what I keep saying we're about, which is putting money in, developing talent. Bring them through. A couple of guys have come with us, having been with other promoters, but the majority of them are the fighters that we've developed. You know, we're not in the business of knocking fighters off, and I keep saying we're not in the we're not in the uh, air miles business. You know, Kel Brook done fantastic out of the stakes, very close fight, but he did what he had to do. But he did that. No promoter did that. He did that. You know, he went out to the stakes. There was no you know putting your money up to make sure it happened up there. He went out there in a very close fight and won it. And good luck to him on that. But that's down to him, not down to anybody else. And uh, and uh, you know he done. You know he's, he, he's done fabulous to do that, but we've got some you know we've got some good young talent. We've got some good shows coming up up until Christmas, and those and, the, and depending on the outcome of all those fights, we'll set up some great fights for the first quarter of 2015. So we're working very hard, and more importantly, I could keep banging on about what we've been doing for a long time is focusing probably and devoting probably about 70% of our energies here into building a TV channel. Which is what we've done. You know, you'll be making your debut soon on there, won't you? Which we're all looking forward to, I hope. But you know, we've got the we're, we're developing we've developed a TV channel. It's coming up to its third anniversary. You know, so it's a bit of a feat, um, and I'm quite pleased. I'm quite pleased the way things are going. Now, now we've got that got that sort of on a on a real good footing. Our objective now is, you know, and, we, and has been for quite a few months now, is now, you know, refocusing more of our energy back into, into, into the fighters. It's not that we've not not been doing it, but we've got more time now and more resources and energy to put into that. So our guys, have been, you'll see, they'll be motoring over the next 12 months, and we'll, you know, we'll be, and I think they'll reap the benefits of our endeavours with their talents that they've got, and we'll have some titles. Um. Going back to this uh, Rigondo situation, Frank, if, he, if you are to do something with him, what sort of job do you need to do on him commercially and from a PR point of view to get him out to the, to, look, to the casual know, fan as it's, as it's Let known. me tell you something. Everybody, who, who are your favourite Mexican fighters? Who, name a couple, name one of them. Marcus? In the last, in, Mar no, in, you know, in the last 15 years or so. You say Barrera's got to be up there, Barrera, isn't he? Marquez. Where did Barrera win his world title and who did he win it with? when he was sort of basically pushed to a side with me in the UK. We brought him to the UK, fights over here, you remember? Right. Remember that, won it and all that? You know, Rigondo is coming in with the title, not having to challenge for him, coming in with the title. You know, he's, he could be anything. He's a, I mean, he's a quality, quality fighter. 
No one, you're an idiot if anybody, or a, you know, I mean, you're an idiot, but anybody who thinks he's not has got to be an idiot. And it's all about, you know, in my opinion, what we're trying to do here is to, is to bring him here, establish him here, and if we can get the deal done, then uh, then he's got a base for us to work to. Then obviously it'd be, you know, back out in the States and, or even China, wherever it may be, to, to, to get involved in the super fights. But, you know, I'm very interested and very keen to do it. I've always been interested in bringing the fight. I mean, we brought Tyson over here. You know, it's not something I've just started doing, is it? Well, Tim Witherspoon over here. You know, lots of different fighters over the years have, 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 have appeared on my shows. Uh, you know, big name fighters, very famous fighters. And uh, he, he's one of them, and he's one of the most exciting fighters out there. We're in the promotion business. You know, it's all very well keep saying about, you know, um, what is it? They're not, they're not box office, they've got 10,000 people. That's the job we're in. That's our job. And you're getting into a head start that you're actually, if, as soon as he has a fight here, do you think, it's not like we're bringing someone in who's coming in from scratch. We're bringing in a world champion. Do you think that you're not going to read about it in the newspapers? Do you think the forums are not going to be saying, I want to see this kid? I'd be, I'd be very surprised in it, because let me tell you, if he was coming and fighting on another person's show, I certainly would be interested in seeing it and watching it. And uh, if, we, if we get this over the line, I'm really excited about it, and hopefully we will do. Um, but, you know, until we get until we do get it over the line, it's, it's, it's not a done deal yet. As I said to um, Eddie Heron in the interview yesterday, like, we don't obviously understand the facts and figures of the, the financial sense of it, but just from a boxing uh, fan point of view, with Regondo being unquestionably the best super pandemic weight in the world yeah. right now, yeah. then that is a good thing for us from that point of view. That's but it's right about it, but, but it's all about investment. You know, what I'll be doing is backing my judgment by, if, if we do the deal, by bringing him here, that we can do something. It's not, I don't, it's not a ready-made ready article. What he's saying is, if I put him on, I'm going to lose money. What we're saying, we probably will lose money putting him on, but that's the investment we make. If it takes three years, as he's saying, then we, you know, we're all in the wrong business. I don't think Rigondo is, you know, is going to take three years for the public to, you know, if, if, if we do the deal and get the fights we want him to get. Tag. I don't think that's going to take time. I mean, you know, him and Frampton is as big a fight, as big a fight than any fight out there. Could you imagine him fighting in in Ireland against Frampton? Be unbelievable. You won't be able to. You put it on in a football stadium. Absolutely put. Up in take quick up Manchester. What could what business would that do? That fill out absolutely fill out. The uh, was it phones for you now? It's called phones for you. Or is it MEM? Phones for you. Arena. It, it would sell it out, and if it didn't sell it out, we wouldn't be doing our jobs. So how on earth could that not be the case? And why wouldn't those guys want to fight him? You know, he's he's the best. They don't want to fight him. That's a message. Don't tell us that all, that all these fighters are great fighters. If they want to be the best, fight the best. Okay. Um, moving on now uh, with Billy Joe Saunders. Peter Quillen faces. Uh, Korobev in yeah. Washington. I think that's a show that's been promoted by Jay Z, the rapper. Are you that's familiar right, with yeah. Jay Z, the rapper? I, I, I have heard. Of, I've heard. Big Pimping. You heard that one? No, no. I tell, I've heard he's he's quite an interesting act. He's got a nice little combo, hasn't he? That plays behind him. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's got a beautiful wife as well, Beyonce. Yeah. Shout out to Beyonce as well. Yeah. But um, anyway, Peter Quillins, they won the perfect for that fight, so he's fighting yeah. the, the unbeaten Russian uh, Korobev. Uh, where does this leave Billy Joe Saunders? Well, Bill, as we always said, that's his mandatory. So yeah. that was what that was, and and Quillen's due another mandatory. It's, it's another mandatory out there. So the the, uh, the deal that we did with the IBF was uh, sorry, we did with the IBF. Deal we did with the WBO was that Bill would get into you know is, he's now in the number two spot. So he'll go up to the number one, and the bottom line of it all is that he he would he would fight uh, the winner of those two, which will probably take place sometime early 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 next year, just probably around the springtime. In the meantime, Bill's got a fight, and uh, you know we've got to look at other options. Mm. What are those other options? Because he's got one more defence of the British to keep it, is that Yeah, he gets yeah. the belt. I mean, you know, a, listen, a big fight, a big fight out there is no doubt is him and uh, Chris Eubanks Jr. Everybody's been talking about it. They keep talking about it. There's no love lost between them. And uh, that's something that we're, you know, we, we, we've been talking about. Bill was up here yesterday. Um, he wants to fight, and, uh, and we'll speak to uh, old man Eubank and, and see where we go with it. I mean, I know at the last the last show he said that they were looking for the fight, so yeah, we were we're looking 
quite closely at trying to get that together. Is that fight big now, or is it fight with something on the line other than British Commonwealth and European well, I don't think it I, You know, it, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, years ago, you know, I remember a few years ago when we made uh, George Groves and, and um, uh, what's his name, um, James Degale, yeah. when we made that fight, everyone said, oh, it's too soon. Well, you know, George went on and fought for twice for the world title, got beat, but he actually fought for the world title twice. And James is going to fight for the world title in February against Frock. So, providing Frock still doesn't vacate the title. So, that is, <coughs> it's not going to hurt if they get together, if they fight. You know, it's, it's a big fight now. It'd be a big fight down the road. It could be a big return down the road. I'm quite sure if George Groves can tr somehow resurrect his career, come up for two knockouts, if he can do that. You know, even James and Gale is in a, a, another fight down the road. And that's, it's the same thing with, with, with Bill. And uh, and Chris. Certainly hope that fight gets made. Um, Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora rescheduled now. And, it's, and we're going to announce they're going to there there'll be a press conference next week, and we'll be announcing the undercard. And I've got to tell you something. There's three fights. If I can get them together, there's three fights on this one. Well, one's made. We get the other two fights made. They're all 50-50 fights and quality fights. Do you know what has been made? Yeah. From the teller. Yeah, it's uh, Derek Chisora and Tyson Fury. Pay attention. I like, I like Pay attention, good boy. Good sense of humour. But <laughs> there's three other fights you're saying. Two, one's been... Is, it, is that the three you're including? Yeah, Chisora I mean, it's big two. And there obviously there'll be, be, you know, there'll be some, some other, other sort of you know, minor titles. But, but there's, there's two good quality fighters involving really good quality British opposition, which I think everybody would be really pleased to see. Mm. Frank, from a fan point of view, obviously there was... It wasn't a memorable week in Manchester from that side, but obviously the undercard still no, went ahead. Yeah. But for people that are booking tickets for this, like, where's the assurance that this fight Look, will actually go ahead? Where's the assurance? You know, guy got in, you know, Derek got injured, fractured his his, his uh, thumb. That's the end of it. There's nothing we can do about that. Happens in boxing. Happens, uh, you know, Arsenal, Giroud, seventy was it ninety fourth minute? He broke his toe. He's going to be out of January. You know, things happen in sport, especially if it's a contact sport like. Boxing, unfortunately, unfortunately, will happen. That fight will go on. They both want it to fight as they're contracted to fight each other. They ain't going to be fighting anybody else because they, they they have both signed to fight, and uh, and it is rescheduled for that day. It's one hundred percent on on that day. Touch wood. Let's hope so. Um, the the belts on the line are they exactly the same belts that were on the yeah. line, yeah. and the, obviously the mandatory slot for yeah. for Klitschko yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's all. And Klitschko. Same thing with Klitschko, has he pulled, pulled out? out. You know, what are you going to do? It's, um, he done it Derek Chisora, if you remember, yeah, uh, the day before a fight. So it happens. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's not conspiracy theories, and I know people love all that stuff, they, especially some of the internet jockeys, but, you know, injuries, and unfortunately, and, uh, and I hope he's, um, I hope he's getting more Peter Fury's, yeah. you know, brother and, uh, and Tyson's uncle, is, he's still in hospital, and I hope he's, he's comfortable, but, that's what happened, isn't it? You know, beyond our control. Absolutely. Um, Paul Butler. Yeah. You're now former uh, IBF champion. What's next for him? We, he's fighting on the 25th of October in Liverpool, yeah. and we are going to announce his opponent next week. Okay. Um, he's dropped down a weight because he's he's a super flyweight. He's not a, he's not a bad weight. I'm sure he'll go back up again in time, but that's the weight that he's more comfortable at. And you know, we I mean basically went out to prove a point with him that you know, here's a guy we feel he's come we feel he's uh, capable of winning a world title in record time and we set out to do that and that's what he did. Mm. Was there ever any consideration of him facing his which would have been his mandatory in career um, at all? I I've got to be honest with you, I just don't want him giving the weight away at the moment. Yeah. It's pointless. I mean, you know, he's not especially for the smaller guys, you know, the heavier weights can do those, do that quite easily. Those Smaller weights, it's 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 a difficult thing, and uh, you know I, I want him to, I want him to be at his best when he fights. Listen, he'll fight anyway <coughs> in a heartbeat. You know what he's like. He's a fighting man, Paul. There's no no problem with that. But from my point of view, you know I'm managing him, and I've got to manage him correctly. And, and, and in my opinion, that you know the the be his best weight is super flyweight, and that's the weight he's going to fight at. Frank, uh, your next show will be on September the twentieth. At your call, yep. I believe. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about that show. Well, we've got, got all our young gladiators out. Um, Bradley Skeet is fighting for the 
Commonwealth, we've got Frank Fulioni's on the show, um, Tom Baker, Kakorian, and all the youngsters going through. Unfortunately, young Mitchell was going to be on there, but again, injury, so it, it, I was absolutely gutted about it. Actually, he looked like he, you know, he just sort of yeah. got himself back into it, so hopefully he'll, he'll get himself well and he can fight in November on the show at, uh, at, at, at the XL. But um, I was disappointed, but it's a good, it's a good little show, you know, good, good, what you're called, Bill. We've had some great shows there, you know, with some of the young youngsters that we're bringing through, and they've been been uh, quite exciting nights. I think we'll have the same thing there on the twentieth. Uh, Frank, we've got to ask before you announce your show on the twentieth. There was already two shows going on, uh, one up north with Mick Hennessy, and obviously one in London with George Groves. So putting three shows or get having three shows from a, a boxing point of view on the same night. I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand what you're saying. But but at that time, and we'd announced our date. I think we had the date done before Mick announced his date, right. um, and we did it before um, and before George Groves, I believe we put it together. What we've got on Box Nation, we've got on the 6th Frampton, 13th we've got Mayweather. Mayweather, so that's the next date. Right, okay. I've got to get, otherwise my guys, everyone is saying we're not running shows, you know, they don't run shows, so that's where we are. So for Box Nation fans, it's fabulous, you've got, you know, three weeks. Uh, some cracking shows, and uh, I'm not sure what the whole schedule is up until the end of the year. But I should think, if you're a boxing fan, you're in boxing heaven. Watching, you know, what, what's coming up on there is just fabulous on Box Nation up until Christmas. Absolutely. Um, your show in October will be on October the 25th. Correct. In Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, the return of the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about that. Obviously, Derry Matthews on it. Uh, Liam Smith. Uh, Paul Butler, Chris Eubank Jr., Tom Stalker. Keep going. Flanagan. Oh, Terry Flanagan. Come on. Terry Flanagan. There's yeah. one more. Oh, Kevin Sepsis. Uh, it's just like you, yeah, when you. Thanks, Ben. Now, see that? You, you'd have the same trouble naming the Magnificent Seven, wouldn't you? That's it. See, it's an old one. Old boys like me, they can't. Could you, you, name the, could you name the original Magnificent Seven? Right, let's go for a ring. Robert Vaughan, Yul Brynner, Steve McQueen. James Coburn, got two to go, haven't I? Brad Dexter, he's the one who led there. Tell me there's some gold. You remember that he was laying there and he said, there was some gold to your brother. And I've missed one out and I can't. Horse buckles, the show. How about that? I've done the seven. That's absolutely brilliant, Frank. Do you know what? I was actually making reference to your original show, but you know. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm an old geezer. <laughs> <laughs> the old Magnificent Seven. Some of them are not so magnificent now as they were. Um, Okay, so moving on from there, what what have you got planned for the to sort of close your uh, close the year rather uh, November? Have you got anything potentially you can tell us about? No, we're working we're working on a few things. Uh, I want to get um, I want to get uh, Bradley Saunders moving. I think he's a tremendous talent, and uh, you know I want to get him in a meaningful fight, and so that next year he's really starts moving up the ratings into into a position where he'll be there or thereabouts fighting for a world title. He's a, he's that capable. He's already regarded as probably the, the best like, well, weight in the country right now, and he's got a good ranking within a lot of their yeah. organisations. So. Yeah, well, he's a good, it's, and there's some good domestic fights for him. Mm. There's some good fights there to be made as well, so we'll be looking at all those. Um, just going back to Kelbrook and Sean Paul, did you watch the fight, Frank, at all? Yes, I did. Yeah, and yeah. what did you think of the fight? I thought it was a very close fight. You know, it's one of those you could, you could have gone it either way, and I thought, you know, that Kel... Kel I was quite. I thought when I looked at the fight, knowing, uh, looking at some of the fights that Kel previously had, I remember like he was with me for quite a few. I mean, we guided him into the number one spot three years ago. Uh, he was a, he was the number one to uh, Manny Pacquiao. To Manny Pacquiao. Um, I thought that he was. Uh, I thought he, I thought he did. I thought he got into it well. I, did, I thought you know Porter um, looked nothing like he did in previous fights. But then you know Kel did what he had to do, and I thought towards the end of the end of the fight, the other. You know, the rounds, he was, uh, he was, you know, he, he sort of coming to his own a bit. But um, yeah, he done well. As I said earlier, he went out there and he did what he had to do. He went away from home and, and come back with a prize. We're talking about a potential fight with Amir Khan next summer. What do you think about good, that? It's a good fight. It's a good fight. Uh, it's a fight I'd like to see. Mm. Could that be as big as Fox Groves, in your opinion? Or? I don't know about that. I mean, Fox Groves just took a got. There was so much controversy involved, wasn't there, about that? And you know. It, it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for um, the referee, 
have had Davis because everybody Foster. Foster sorry, had Foster. It wouldn't have happened because of that. I'm doing well in this interview. Um, it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for him. And it also would and it's also the fact that George went out to the went out and absolutely you know, banged on to the governing body. I want a rematch. I want a rematch. He made it happen. Yeah, absolutely. That's what made it happen. Nobody else made it happen. He made it. I don't think um, Carl was too interested in fighting. Well, he didn't want to fight him, did he? Wasn't that interested? I don't I'm not saying he's frightened of him. I just feel you know he did, you know done he'd, that. He'd already beat him. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And, and you know, and the next and he, and he did what he had to do certainly in the second fight. But I think with them two, I think it's uh, you know, I mean, Kel's not a household name like either of those. Two fighters, Amir is, but it's, it's a tough fight. It is a good fight. It's, it's obviously got all the ingredients of a great domestic dust up. It'd be interesting to see whether Amir is going to fight Floyd Mayweather because that's what the plan is or was to fight him in May. Well, that's still going to go ahead. Um, who knows? Um, but it's a, it, it is a good fight. There's no doubt about that. I think that it's. A, I think people will be surprised. I mean, most people think that Kelbrook will do it. I, I don't. I think I think it's a tough fight. I think it's a tough fight for Kelbrook. You know, whatever we all think about Amir, he's got the biggest part in the business. He's got speed, and he's been in at the top level con consistently for the last what how many years now? Absolutely. So you know, Kel's the new kid on the block as far as winning a world title is concerned. So it'd be, it'd be an, interest, an interesting fight. Indeed. Um, Frank, can you give us a, an update on what's going on with Fox Nation at the minute? Is, you know, is everything going as planned? Yeah, we're doing. We're we're really pleased the way things are going. We've just gone on the on the Talk Talk platform now. So if you, you know, if you're involved, if you subscribe to Talk Talk, you can pick up the channel. So it's another development for us. Um, we've got a lot, quite a bit of new programming uh, regarding. Um, Vintage fights, old fights. We're going to be we're producing quite a few, so we'll be seeing them. Be a revamping of the schedules. Uh, there's going to be some. Uh, we're talking to a few people about up, putting other programming on there regarding uh, fight news and things like that. So we'll see if that's going to come to fruition. We've got we've got quite a few things happening, and more importantly, you know, our, we'll, we'll, we will be looking to get. A, you know, there, there will be a live fight every week. That's what the name of the game is—to get a live fight from around the world, wherever it's taking place, every week. And we we managed to do that up to the last couple of weeks. Excuse me, because um, it's that time of year, and there's certainly nothing on this weekend, is there? In, in August, there's no big shows. So. No, there isn't. But it's going well. I mean, we're really pleased with it, and uh, you know, all the team. Jim McMahon, who's the who, who's the you know he's the MD. He's done a fabulous job there, as as has all the staff. It's been really good, and. Uh, and I think you can see the improvement on it. You know, if we've gone from, as I say, it's the third anniversary in September, um, gone from, we've now got HD, we're up on HD, we've got the two, two, two platforms going on that, we're, uh, it's getting better and better. I was just saying, Barry Jones is brilliant. I've got to tell you something, he's a fine he is, Barry. I think he's really developed into a really good pundit. He's got, you know, he's got a good sense of humour. And he, and he reads the fights well, mm. and he won't be swayed by anybody. Sometimes you you know you you're watching a fight on TV and you can see one commentator lead another. Other. I'm not pointing that to anyone. I'm talking about over the years. That's things like that. But Barry's got his own opinion, and uh, and I think he does a great job. He's not, really good. He's not the full ticket, but that's a well, he's, he's a bit radio rental, but you know, other than that, he's he's okay. <laughs> Right, okay, just the final question, probably the most important, important question of the whole interview, Frank, really. Uh, as controversial as it is, have you been watching Celebrity Big Brother? Well, thankfully, I was on holiday and I couldn't get Channel 5 for some reason. Oh, really? I was, but I got back a few days ago and I turned it on and, yeah, I did see. I, I, I didn't watch it, I watched, I'm really, I'm, I, I never used to watch the thing anyway. I never, I don't think I've ever probably watched it once, more than 10 minutes of it in my whole life, but I, I watched it and. Uh, I think more to the point, what do you make of this whole Frank Maloney, Kelly Maloney situation, well, Frank? It took everyone uh, well, he's worked by surprise. For, for, he worked for me 30 odd years ago, and then he came back to work for us, what was it, about 10 years ago, just before, or 8 years ago, before he went to um, stand as mayor for London. Um, what do I think of it? I mean, it's. I was quite shocked as anybody. I mean, I was, I was reading his brother Eugene's comments over the weekend, and uh, and obviously his brother was shocked. So I, I, his family was shocked. Certainly, I was. I think you know, 
look, whatever he is, whatever he's, you know, whatever, he, and obviously he's, you know, to be going through what he's going through, having all these, what was it, hormonal injections and so forth, and all the things he's having done, and, and obviously he's gonna, seems to me he's gonna go and have the ultimate done, which is a bit eye-watering as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but that, at 61 years of age, that's a bit of a thing to do. I just, I just feel about it that there's a couple of things. Is that you got, I think more about his family. You know, he's, he's got young, young. He's got daughters. He's got a young daughter yeah. at school. He's got grandchildren. I think you know, if he was to do that, have it done privately. And you know, you're selling it to newspapers. You're on Big Brother. You're doing all what you're doing. It's, it's not exactly, it's not exactly a shrinking Kelly or shrinking Violet. There are a few people few people suggesting, cynically as it may be, that the whole thing is a big publicity stunt, scam or whatever. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I mean, you know, to grow yourself a... Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a publicity stunt. I mean, it's a bit, I, mean I, I, I don't think... I, no, I, th I think there's a... You know, I, I don't know, you put... You know, from a generation I come from, it's all pretty... Strange, and it's not like you know it's coming. So I don't think that's just your generation, Frank. No, right, I'm just telling you because that's what people, you know, in this PC yeah. world we live in. You know, it's that. Yeah. But look, that's his business. He's you know he, he feels that's what he wants to do. I, I, I just don't think you know keep having it rammed down your throat and, and told said what it is. You know what I mean? You just don't want that, do you? Um, well, listen, you know it's, I mean. it's down to but, them. Um, it's down to them at the end of the day. It's, it's, it's his life and it's what makes him happy. But I think, you know, you, if, you know, there are other people to consider, which is family and so forth. And that's, uh, and, you know, and I think that they, their consideration should become before any his or anyone else's. You know, I'm, obviously they're all supporting. Well, it seems like they're supporting except his, his brother and, his, and so forth. But it's, you know, do, do I want, I, I, I just can't see what's, Watching TV and watching Frank Maloney sitting in a sitting there in a, a, a wig and, uh, and you know he's got his wig on and his women's clothes. You know he's, he's, he's sort of like one of them jobs. If he knows it, like you showing up tomorrow on you, you going, what's all that about? You know? mm. I just don't. Uh, I think it had quite the same effect. But I think one thing he That's should do. Friday night one thing he should do. <laughs> one thing he should do. He should get himself a stylist. Yeah. Yeah. Because some of that club is a bit iffy. Yeah, I don't know about the big brother uh, stylist in there, or if he's obviously bought his own club. All right, well, Frank, um, you don't want to reveal anything to us right now, yeah? we're not going to see... Uh... No, they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, all right, good, good, Frank. But, right. You know, but if you do, just give us the exclusive and we're cool. So. Read all about it. <laughs> all right, okay. listen, Frank, Thanks for talking to IFL okay. TV and uh, obviously we'll catch up with you again soon. Good to have these little chats and just to get everything out there or whatever. So <laughs> get them out of there. Right. Literally. All right, this is Coogan Cassius with Frank Warren uh, here at the Frank Warren uh, headquarters for IFL TV. Thank you very much.